I ventured to trade shorting Gallo. Shorting Gallo because I broke out even on my last trade that I was up significantly. But here I entered it because I'm assuming some sort of channel. So this made it some sort of channel so far. This slope resistance ends up hitting hard on multiple time frames. The 15 minute, seven, eight, like it really, really drives in nicely here. This could have even been reduced to like that or like that, it really depends. And then I entered because it hit the top of the channel and then it made another channel in tier. So my entry was literally at the top of this channel hit. That was my entry. I don't know what it is, this count. One, two, three, four, five, perhaps. I see that like on the higher time frames, they're really coming down. This doji fucked everything up right there. I was literally up about 7,000 earlier, and I broke even on that trade, which is really frustrating. Extremely frustrating. I made it for about $350,000 right now. Let's see if I can win this trade here and make it back. That little, I think I lost like 500 or a thousand maybe. This looks pretty bearish though. I entered right at the top of there. That was a 1% spike up. I don't think it's gonna get back into that little channel. I think it's gonna be coming to the downside. The 30 minute makes a pretty nasty rejection up. 45 minutes so far has a really ugly candle which rejected 2% in a wick. The lower side is 253 that it hit. So if it goes down another 2%, I'm gonna be up about $10,000 total. And that's gonna make me really happy today because I'm buying a house. I'm buying a $1 million house, so every thousand matters right now. <laughs> you know, you gotta, have a, you gotta have a lot of money put aside for maintenance or just general expenses for new furniture. So buying a $1 million house, you gotta have like at least 1.5 to 2 mil just to be secure, right? You can't buy a house and just be house broke. <laughs> you can't just buy a car and then, you know, like buy a nice car and you can't afford to maintain it, right? You can't be house poor. And I'm buying it literally in cash. So that's really important for me to make some extra money on the side right now to have a good cushion for emergencies. We finally fall down below the 55 EMA and we're starting to reject it. So it's getting intense right now. Trying to be very calm. I literally shorted it earlier. I wanna be honest from up here, from 216 ranges, 2-1, like right there. And I literally was up 3% on 40,000, $400,000, I was up Maybe twelve thousand at total at once, but I didn't take my profit because I thought it would drop a lot for more. If we take a look on fib range right now, the fib structure it starts from there I would imagine, and we would be taking it up there. So the fib target can easily hit down to about two point four eight. If it hits down there, like around two point four, two point five, we'll say. Let's just say I I close mine at. 0 0.250 that's a $15,000 profit total so I'll have brought up my account from 71 to like 84k so this is gonna be a nice profit very nice it's coming to the downside now getting a little bit of a drop nothing too parabolic slow and steady I'll even be happy if I can close my profit at 255 we're getting some movement to the downside now I'm up about six thousand dollars. Not bad. If we, I'm gonna take my profit probably at the bottom right there. This is definitely a channel that's forming. If that's not a channel, then you know, like, I don't know if it's gonna be curved like that. Who knows? We really don't know much right now, except this is a support that really couldn't break on on the five minute time frame. It was really annoying. This one right there, like right there. Do you see all of this? That happened over 30 fucking minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six bars, 30 minutes. Where it just couldn't break to the downside. 
It was very frustrating that he couldn't break. We just spiked up 1% right now, literally 1% or 0.6%. So now we're trying to break this again. It's very annoying support right there, this support. That support is driving me bonkers right now. Where it's every time it gets there, man, is there ever strong support at 25684. So we have to really wait and just see how this reacts. If it does, it's just going to drive right down to 253. And at 253, by profit point, maybe we even go much harder. I'll be up about $11,000, which I'd be very, very happy. So let's see if this is going to break down. See, this support extends further back. It extends all the way up to over here. See, see that? Not, it's not. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if it hit the top range again. See that? Like, look at that. It's one of the most annoying supports that I've ever seen in my life. Where every time it gets there, it just doesn't want to fucking break down. And it's uh, causing me a lot of anxiety because I was in a position earlier where I was up like up to 12k and ended up breaking fucking even on it so that was really frustrating for me so let's see if this is gonna end up closing here soon if you look at it on other time frames you're also seeing this right here as a support right see that on a 20 minute everything below here you see wicks so we're getting many different levels of support right now here just gotta wait here we go again, we're reaching this support, the really annoying one, this guy right here that's coming up. Let's see if we can break it this time, which is basically the low of this candle right there. On the five minute, it extends pretty far back. See it now? Like that, just like that. But we're, we're getting a lot of hesitation to go down. Look at the wicks. Every time it goes down, the wicks just drive it up. So it's like, what do I do in this situation? You know, like the four minute wants to curve up. Everything wants to go up right now. But the one hour, you know, I'm waiting. I'm holding on hard for this one hour to cross over. Because what if it crosses over, then I'm going to get a big drop. On the one hour, this is the support right now that we're at. That we're trying hard to drive it home. It just needs to get a lower low. Easier said than done, but the, the bulls are really insistent right now on holding it up. On Gala, it's really neutral in every way. The volume is diminishing, of course. Hardcore. The five minute is below the EMA finally. Like it's starting to really get a bearish movement. The 55 EMA is almost above everything. If the 55 EMA is above everything, that's gonna be very bearish. See, see, we see on the on the one minute chart now that actually even on the two minute, I think. No, not yet. On the one minute chart, that fanning strategy of mine where it crosses over, right? Where the 200 EMA is resisting for all of it, that's happening. So there is bearish pressure. There's certainly bearish pressure pushing to the downside now. I'm up a little bit, up about one and a, one and a half percent. Yo, what's up guys? So I entered a trade earlier. I thought I was recording the whole freaking time, but I wasn't. I got into a really good entry at the top over here. Pretty solid entry, I have to say. It, now it looks like it's trying to do an ascending triangle, or sorry, descending triangle. I, didn't, I, I was narrating literally the whole trade, but nope, didn't quite get the narration. I'm up about five, six thousand, or five grand right now. We're meeting a very contentious area of support that wants to hold hard. This guy right here, right here, from right there. We're getting this type of support structure, like that, just really annoying. The 30 second chart's great though. The 30 second chart, it fanned down. 
now it's starting to the fanning strategy where the EMAs are above it, right? So we're now just sandwiched in between here, the two minute chart of the 55 and the 200 EMA. So we already broke to the bearish side on the one minute chart. Now we got to break down to the lower side on the two minute chart. The, the, all, the, all the time frames are bearish, crossed over. The one hour is about to cross over in 24 minutes. The 45 minute crossed over hard, see that? really hard it's on its way down it's just diving taking a nose dive I'm only up 3k now I got a really good entry from the channel that formed this channel formed like that and I took it at the top of the channel it went outside of that range and then it came right back down so I entered as it was falling on this candle right there that's a really good entry now it looks like it wants to contend the top again. This has been a very annoying chart, to be honest. It's not really doing what I wanted to do. And it's taking a very long time to, to break to the downside. The five minute chart is the worst because of that support that support but the good news is it's below the 55 EMA on the five minute chart right now I'm up about 1.3 percent I'm playing three hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now I'm leveraging times five because it's a highly 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 confluent reason to enter and most likely we're gonna get a short to the downside hard let's do the daily wave count just to show you the count was like this, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. This is probably a three in there. And I think that that's the four somewhere in there. One, two, three, four, five. Finishes up the five right up there. I think it finishes up the five there because this is some, some pattern. I can't figure that one out that forms. Maybe it's even the one there. You never know, like whatever it is. But either way, there we go, we're starting to break. Get a one, two, three. This is the four that overlaps heavily, and that's the five. The five is very identifiable because I see this as truncated. One, two, three, super sloppy. Five, like, this is the best. You're gonna find a lot of overlap in these types of situations. Did, did you just see that? That same support right there? It got to it again at 660. Yeah, at six, six, like you should see what I would be up at two six zero. I'm up the five six zero. I'm up seven thousand four hundred there. When it, when it gets to that dip right there. So I'm looking for a close about down here to the last low. We're probably gonna get some support at the last low here, where we got that wick. It literally just poked it. If you take, like, this looks like it's a descending triangle, right? It looks like it is. I'm not going to bother. This looks like a one, two in there. One, two, three, four, five. So there's still waves to go, in my opinion. If I take my fib range of the entire structure, I can easily get down to the lower structure here. So I might take it at 249, above, above here, about 250. Okay. So if I would take that point two five zero, I'm up fifteen thousand dollars, which is a really really significant gain today. I haven't made a trade this big in a while, but first of all, we have to get a break to the downside. If you are going to take a high probability trade and leverage this amount, you have to make sure you can handle the the rides, the waves up and down, because you can't just cash out on your position every time you see it spike up a little bit. You have to maintain your composure. You have to stay extremely calm. You have to know how to play with lots of discipline without having any panic. So usually I keep a big bankroll online, but I cashed out about $100,000 for my home that I'm buying. Just putting into my Turkish bank account, man. I'm buying like a $1 million home, so you gotta have lots of extra money on the side. You can't just have a million, right? You gotta have like, 
1.5-2 million because there's lots of maintenance on the home, things that you're going to need to buy, tax, fees on the house, right? So car, etc. right? So your living expenses as you make more money, it generally increases as well. And as you make more money, you really do, you don't spend more, like I don't spend more, but my expenses <laughs> increase because I'm going to be having a much bigger home. Right now, the home that we live in is very small. It's Uraz's original home, and I moved in with her. <laughs> well, now my house, too. It's just uh, like a 13, 1400 square feet house, which is like 130, 140 square meters. And um, there's three cats, a dog, and an iguana, so it's really difficult to have the space. Higher wick, higher wick does not instill confidence. Looks like it wants to hit that top side again. Really, it does. It wants to hit that top side. Doesn't look like it's ready to quite break down yet. One minute, just ticked up. So, but if it gets up there, you know, it's going to be right at the 55 EMA. So, this is a really strong resistance, in my opinion. The six minutes going down, the five minutes going down, but we're getting ticks up. See, we're getting really ticks up. Or actually not really now. The one minute ticked up. See that? It ticked up fucking hard. That does not instill confidence. So you want to make sure you're really watching these positions. On the 15 minute chart, we're getting a doji. But we're getting a lower low in general. And it is pushing to the downside. It's now staying below the this EMA. The 21 EMA. So that's good. That's a good sign. We're playing in one EMA at a time. We're below the 55 EMA at the five minute and below the six minute. You're trying to get below the seven minute. And now we're trying to get below the eight minute. So every EMA ends up acting as a support. The more bearish we are, the more we'll trend on a lower EMA. Do you see this pressure right now? It's just lots and lots of pressure. Whoa, that was a good spike down. Honestly, a really good one. I just saw... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That volume was too much. What just ended up spiking? NKN. I don't care about NKN right now. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be driven home now. Do you see? Do you see how there's so much force? There we go. F fuck. Not yet, guys. See that support? I'm telling you, that support is a very strong support. Where it just doesn't have the conviction to drop to the downside quite yet. Not yet. A little bit more. It needs to drop soon. If it, if it keeps holding here, right? Generally speaking, if a support keeps holding at a particular place, there's a strong chance for it to bounce. Let me give you a really good example, okay? Here's people on a really large time frame, okay? Here's support, support here first, so it ended up hitting there. Support, support, support. It looked like it was gonna keep descending because we're getting lower highs, lower highs each time, but it still broke up, okay? So a descending triangle doesn't always guarantee that it breaks to the upside, or I mean that break to the downside. So here we're at the six, eight regions. The momentum is really strong to come down right now. I wouldn't be surprised if a gigantic wick just happened. <laughs> but if a gigantic wick happens, I gotta be really on top of it. So do you see now on the five minute time frame? There we go, we're getting a break. Okay, great, we're getting a break to the downside finally. Are we? Is it gonna get back up? Six five ranges up seven k. There we go. There's the break. Perfect. Okay. We're definitely gonna get to that yellow line, like hundred percent sure. We're gonna get to it because that seems to be very logical, in my opinion. There we go. Coming to the downside. Lots of force right now. I have 
1.35 million. Really calm right now. I'm gonna take that probably at three, like right at that low. This one got 333. So let's see if we're actually gonna break that, okay? But it seems like we're just gonna puncture it, and that's about it. So here's $8,000. Doing great. Just coming to the downside, give me a little bit more of a push. Very nice. I'm all the way up there, 8.7K. Very nice. We're not even close to this right here, the EMA. I can't tell if I should take my profit very soon or if I just let this ride. I'm gonna try to go for a two close. Like that's not much, that's literally like five two. I don't know if it's gonna channel or not. See, I don't know if it's gonna channel at all. So probably it's gonna hit that lower end right there, but let's see if it's gonna just smash through it or not. There we go, it's getting lots of momentum. Look, look at that liquidity just pump up there. But the bears just rejected it hard. The bears really drove to the downside. So I'm up about 10k right now. That's really nice. Huge. Mm, 9k now only. So this is acting as a little support. See? I don't know if it's going to bounce up there and then hit the top end again. But this took so long to break. That literally took about 5 hours to break. So I, don't, I really doubt it's going to hammer at the top side there. We are getting a little bit of a wick on the one minute, but this drop just seems to be very strong and nothing's gonna hold it. I mean, if we can take a look at here, let me just show you. Like, see, see, this is this is the lower end of the wick right there. That's the lower end of the wick, see? At four zero. I don't think it's gonna hold it, honestly. I gotta go to lower time frame and really observe. We're not even close to the 382 Fibonacci. So I don't wanna take my profit here. I wanna really have the discipline to ride this as much as I possibly can. This is a ridiculous trade here. Everything is still wanting to drop, but we're getting resistance going down, meaning there's support right now that's holding it. It's mainly because of this region, that region there. It was a big region, sort of. But I think like here's a doji now on the two minute. I don't like that, you know, but let's see if we can drive it down further then break the two, three, three range. I think we're gonna get a support there, a small support. So a, a very confusing coin of what's going on right now. Let's just look on the higher time frame to gain, gain reassurance. It's heavily diverging to the downside. Actually, every time frame is diverging right now, so there's no reason I should be taking my profit. The one hour is just about to close in 11 minutes. So it seems like it's gonna break. I highly think it's gonna break that 5.3 region right here. 5.3 five, is gonna be taken out. See, see the high there, the low there? It's uh, 2.533. So then the bears are just hammering now. Look at, there's the four zero ranges. There are the four zero ranges. The gala has got major buy, major sellers now just hammering. So here's the three three. Let's see if we're gonna break that. There we go, it's starting to break. I'm gonna go to five one here. There we go, we've just literally broke it. I'm gonna go five one right here. Let's see if I can get a close. Just a little bit lower. Uh, Two five one is gonna be a really big profit. $14,000 roughly. Let's see if the momentum can continue down. Nope. Nah, I think I might have spooked the market combined. No, no, fuck no. There's 1.7 billion. I'm not going to be the one spooking a market. 5.1 is a really good close in my opinion. 5.2 is even better. Like we got to the bottom end right there. See? See right there? That's where we got. That's where you're finding the first support. And also this right here. Like you're finding support there and also like here, okay? So now uh, let's see if I can make a $14,000 profit here. 
it's still driving down. I'm up a lot right now. Still being driven down. Uh, only 1% to go until I close my position. And that 1% is actually... Oh! Oh! That was not good. That was a big spike. Someone, someone decided to prematurely close their position there. This could really signal to the bulls. Oh my god, that was really stressful. I'm going to take out my, my limit order there, see if it's going to encourage a move to the downside. But there's no bullishly diverging anything right now. Like, sure, you got a 15-second crossover, but fuck, that's not going to be much in the long run. Let's see. We did not even get any type of major drop yet. Let's see if it's going to do in that descending triangle now, get all the way back up to the 2577 ranges. If it does that, I'm going to be just really pissed off. Like, I'm talking about getting all the way back up there again for a descending triangle. So now, now we are looking like we're getting to the top there again, see? So now it's all over again. Gotta, gotta start this whole process again of trying to break down. So now in the three minute, 200 EMA, let's see where we're down now. So we're very bearish overall in terms of where the 55 EMA is now above it, even on the five minute, see that? Before it was always below it, acting as a support but now it's actually above it which means that there's a good chance it's still going to push to the downside like really really push or it can come back up to the top side and retest see oh we just got a really big drop like really big drop right there so let's see if this is going to hammer down or not this is a inverted pin bar which implies bullishness but if you look on the higher time frame, there's really no point of you taking your loss or your profit right now. It's still continuously going down, right? But right now, it's it's fighting, finding this support right there where we are from the last candle that I showed you at the 533 range. So because it's finding that support, it doesn't want to go to the downside. There we go. So we're still dropping now. Perfect. Finally. Nice, we're 135000. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, I'm gonna take my close out one here for 14,000. There we go, 251 will be my close. Oh no, every time I pop that in there, I swear to God that they, they drive it with a wick upwards. Ooh man, that's really intense, you know, the way that I'm trading right now. Ah, oh, bullishly diverging RSI too, crap. Crap. So it's gonna got a good chance of it spiking up to complete a to complete a small wave upwards. See that? See the wicks too on the four minute wick and the, the it's got a higher low now. So this is gonna be spiking up for sure. See that? Oh yikes. That was a nasty spike. See that? I could have taken in about twelve thousand. Point two five two five. I could have taken in twelve K. But now it goes back up to the 55 EMA. See, see on the five minute now? See, do you remember before I talked about this resistance or this support? It now turns into a hard resistance. A hard resistance. And if it breaks to the upside, I would be very shocked. So now it looks like it's creating this here still, okay? On the five minute time frame, we're creating a support that really wants to break. Watch. On the one minute, actually on the 15 second, you, even lower there and here, okay? So I still got my limit order in. No, I don't. So now we're trying to really, really break it to the downside. It's, it's having a lot of trouble right now. So the difference between taking profit now and, and soon is $15,000, right? Or sorry, it's $5,000. So I clearly want to make sure that I take the most profit possible. But this is really going to the upside now. It's getting hesitation to go down. And with the hesitation to come down, it does not instill a lot of confidence to hold my position because 
you just never know what kind of spike can happen in these types of markets. So I'm going to take my Elliott wave count on here now. So we're getting back to the four ranges, which I don't like. But as long as it doesn't go back up above the 2.6, I'm okay with that. The 2.6 ranges is where it's going to be deadly, right? That's that support on the five minute that held for an extremely long time, right up there on the five minute, right there, which we actually rejected with a wick. But I hope that we don't hate to sing the word hope, but I don't want it to get another retest. I want it to keep trending to the downside. So this is a really big profit so far. It's up about 9,000, 10,000. There's still a lot of ways for it to go down in my opinion. I just hope it's not making an ABC, then ABC up there. If it does do, do something like that, you know, where it does something like that, I'm fucked on this trade where it goes like that and then like that, right? That's not something I want at all, but it is possible. So now I have to constantly watch this position of mine and see if it's even possible for us to hit that higher side right there. The volume is really low right now still, so we can't, we just simply can't drop below, like below here right now. It's, it's really hard, that support, that wick right there. And then we go further back, you go further back even, you're getting, you're getting all of this region right here. Like all of this is a really strong support but this right here is more so on a run down. I don't think it's gonna run up. Just it seems like it wants to run down hard right now. Just give me a little drop right there, a little bit lower, 251, 2515 even I'll take. So it's confused right now. People are hammering to the downside, very confused coin. I would even take it at this low. I'd be happy with that. Let's see on CryptoLoom. CryptoLoom Gala's buyers are in plain play right now. More people are buying, but people are actually shoving it in their face. There we go. I'm just going to put my wall here at 2.2. Literally going to put a wall at 2.2 here for 13.5k. Let's see. Come on, give me a little bit lower. Push it, push it. Give me a good close. Okay, I'm putting my wall up there, right there. Just give me a shatter. Give me a break. It's pushing down, but I am holding as a support for sure. It's a big amount. Let's go, guys. Give me a good profit here. Lots of tense. I'm very, very tense right now. Fuck, man, I didn't. I think it's going to bounce now. Shit. For fuck's sakes. Oh. Really tough. Very tough trade. I'm not joking. That was an insanely tough close. But now I'm thinking to myself, maybe I shouldn't have closed it, right? That's good. I took it off of the book now. Because right now... This low at the three, that's acting as a resistance. So it's not getting back above that low of that candle. So now it's looking like it's trying to hammer at this support, doesn't it? Like a descending type of triangle. So if that goes down, I'm going to be up even more if that breaks. So then I'm going to try to look for a close here, just hypothetically at, at 0.25. One, yeah, that's pretty nice, but looks like it's going up now, fuck. Mm. If I mark it executed right now, it would just spike up hard. Okay. Look, it's trying to break it again now. I like that wick on the five minute. That wick on the five minute made a lower one. It punctured it a little bit. So now it's below the, like, let's see, seven minutes, six minutes, like, that fanning strategy. That fanning strategy is really trying to come to the downside. See that? It's trying to, there we go. It just resisted all of it now. 
So we're both we're bearish up until the six minute chart even. This is just gotta keep going. I have to really be patient with this trade. It's got a really big chance to spike up though, I have to admit. Like spike up two, three percent. Like right now it's wanting to spike. It didn't even get to the two three six fib yet. And I'm pretty confident this is the entire structure. What else could be? Like this has to be the entire structure, like one, two, three, four, five, right up there. And because that's the entire structure, there should be a break to at least like that can't be that bullish. Like there's no way it's that bullish, only th that small of a retracement. Like there's no fucking way. So now we're back up to the four ranges for fuck's sakes. Probably gonna go all the way back up to five nines. If it does that, very frustrating trade. But I wanted to hammer at this particular support to break to the downside, back to the 388 ranges. Uh, anything, any signs? Like the one minute's, you know, ticking up now. Fuck. Thir 15 seconds coming back down here. It's getting driven down, right? 30 seconds ticking down a little bit. So do you see? Five seconds down. So we want this momentum to keep going down and down and down. This way it cascades over until the higher time frames. And then if it cascades to the higher time frames, we win. Nice. The one hour, uh, 55, the one hour MACD just crossed over. It just crossed over. Okay. So this is great. <laughs> it's a lagging indicator, but nevertheless, Look at this huge candle right here, okay? Do you guys do you guys see this huge bearishly engulfing candle? We might get a small retracement up for that candle and then break down, but maybe maybe not. Like this one hour candle really oh shit. It just it just spiked up hard. Like it spiked up 0.8% right there. This is getting incredibly frustrating, this coin. But if you look on it, this is only one, like look. Look closely. One, two, three. This is probably four only. And there's got to be a five down for this wave. I'm guessing there's a five down. Unless this is making a channel like that, then it fucking spikes all the way to the top, and then boo. Like if this trade happens like that, you know? Do you see this? You see that now? Or even like this, okay? Right, and then now we end up getting a channel like that. So then I'd have to wait all the way to the top again near my entry, and then I would be losing this trade in terms of being able to profit here. So then it was going to go all the way up two percent again, despite my entry being very high. There's still a risk of it breaking to the top. I don't want to risk that. That's very irritating. So I'm kind of led to believe to take this profit now. Unless we break down right here, right now. Okay. Like this is really irritating. I don't know if this is the five wave structure. One, two, three, four, and the five coming down. Or if this is a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, up, right? So it's very confusing on all channels. Beautiful. That's a big candle. That's good. It's starting to hammer again. Let's see if it actually hammers to the downside here. Let's see. It's still coming to the downside. Beautiful. Nice, nice. We finally get a drop to the downside. I'm going to take my profit right here. I'm going to market execute all of this. Nope, I'm not going to yet. I'm just gonna keep waiting a little bit longer. Beautiful, I'm gonna put my limit in at 251. Okay, I'm gonna actually close my position here for $14,000 and boom, I close everything for about $13,000, $14,000, bam.